All right, Shalom. I'm going to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Ha'rukakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the hopefully elect. And uh, I came across this uh, video from Epic Economist, right? And this is touching on how, you know, things are getting worse and it's not getting better. Okay? And you have many people that believe that. They believe in this recovery spirit, okay? They have been led to believe that, you know, this place, America, Babylon the Great, will be healed, okay? But the truth of the matter matter is, Babylon will not be healed, all right? Matter of fact, I'll start off with that scripture first, if I can find it, Lord willing, okay? Um, let's see. <clears throat> This is the book of, let me see, uh, just bear with me, okay, because it speaks about uh, Babylon being healed, um, let's see, this is then, I thought it was Revelation 18, let's try, let's try Jeremiah 50. <clears throat> and this is a, a, a impromptu through the spirit, you know. I don't really have nothing together, so I just want to set a roll with this through the spirit. All right. Let's see. Uh, nope, not Jeremiah 51. That was Isaiah 47. Right, but uh, I mean, I'll just continue on with the point. You know, you know, people believe that this place is going to recover. People believe that this place will be healed. But the scriptures say that this place won't be healed. Okay? This place will not be healed. Matter of fact, let's pull it up on my screen. Alright. Babylon will not be healed. Ah, oh, it was Jeremiah 51. <laughs> Jeremiah 51. <laughs> I was in there, all right? I knew it was somewhere. I'm like, man, it gotta be in Jeremiah. All right, so this is the book of Jeremiah 51, verse nine. And it reads, let's start at, mm, let's start at verse seven. It says, Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad, okay? Now we know Babylon is where? Babylon is America. Is America. Okay? That's what Babylon is. Daughter of or the daughter of Babylon is America. Okay, but we know scriptures like going into Jeremiah, the 50th, 51st chapter, the 50th chapter, it speaks about uh Babylon. Okay, but we know this place is spiritually what? Babylon. Spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Alright? Numerous places. Okay, so that's what it's speaking of. This is not talking about the ancient Babylon. This is talking about America, Babylon, and Great. All right, so it says, Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. You see? How has Babylon made the earth drunken? How has America made the earth drunken? Through what? Through its wine. What is this wine speaking of? This wine is speaking of what? Their philosophies, you know? A part of this wine that's in that cup they're speaking is uh, of their philosophies. Okay, their customs, you know, their, uh, you know, religious beliefs, you know, their democracies, all these different things. All right, that's why the scriptures say, uh, in, uh, I believe it's, oh, what is that at, um, let's see, Isaiah 28, Isaiah 28. Oh my goodness, Kim. Oh yeah, Isaiah, actually Slaki, Isaiah 29 verse 9, it says, Stay yourselves in wonder, cry out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink, you know? So this is not talking about, you know, this, the physical wine that we know that comes from the vine, comes from the grape. We're not talking about the strong drink, okay? Like uh, Hennessy or vodka, you know? Do say, it's not none of those things, right? It's talking about what? 
the philosophies, the ways of America, Babylon, and great. And the nations have drunk that wine. See, this is why you see the nations, okay, the people of the other nations, what? Doing the same things as America, right? Taking on and carrying the same philosophies, okay? Which he has made these places drunken, right? Which has made them naked, okay? Which have made them bare, right? All these same nations that have what? They have lost their way, you see? What I mean by losing their way, they have lost and left off from their ancient customs and what conformed to the ways of America, Babylon, and Great. You see? This is what they have done, right? And a lot of times, you know, America gave them this, uh, uh, put them in an ultimatum where it was like, look, you have to follow this way, right? You got you to gotta be this way or follow this way. You know, to, to, to be a, a, a part of, you know, a part of the things that we have going on. Okay. So it says the nations have drunk enough her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. You see, so the nations have drunk and took on the ways of America. Okay. And now these nations are what? Now these nations are angry. Now these nations are upset because now they see the result of taking on the ways of America, Babylon, and Great. They see how destructive it has been to their nation, to their country, to their people, right? Which is their nation, right? So they have seen what it has done, okay? It is why they looked on that that woman, right? That harlot who they were sleeping with. You know, it looked all good for the outside, you know? But later down the road for the inside, right? America, America right? That, that harlot that is speaking about that woman, right? Has what? Passed to these nations, you know, these these nasty diseases, you know, herpes and uh, syphilis and AIDS. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm using it in a in a, in a disease in a, a a funny way of saying it, but but it's true. You see, which these disease diseases has slowly destroyed these nations. Okay, some quicker than others. You know that's why I mentioned these different diseases because some of these diseases, you know, you take on, you know, uh, from women, right? That you might not even know you have that disease, but it's destroying you from the inside out. Or it could be destroying you from the outside. Okay? Or like some diseases a woman may give you, you may know on the spot. Some you may not know for 10, 15 years. Same thing with these nations. Okay? They've been in bed with a Babylon and Grace so long, right? So when it was, it was time to get up, now they're what? They're through. Okay, they are completely through. Their nation is through, and it's like they can't even re re revive, right? Or they they can't even get back, you know, uh, on their feet. You see, verse eight it says Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for her pain. If so, she be. If if so, she. It's so like it says. If so, she may be healed, right? May be healed. We would have be we have we will have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let her go, everyone into his own country, for her judgment reaches to the heavens, and is lifted up even to the skies. You see, this is talking about America. Okay, hey, when you read in Revelation the 18th chapter, matter of fact, let's go get that. <clears throat> so, and like I said, this is a, a prompt too through the Spirit. When we get Revelation, the 18th chapter, it says what? Um, verse 4, Revelation 18, verse 4 says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you may not partake of her. No, Salakia, Salakia. Uh, verse 5, it says, For her sins have reached up into heaven, and the Most High have remembered her iniquities. You see what I'm saying? So this is what it's talking about. Okay. Um, now, when we jump to verse 3, it says what? For all nations have drunk of her wine, of the wrath of her fornication, right? And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance, abundance of her delicacies, you see? So these merchants, these different kings of the earth, they have what? They have got rich off America, Babylon, the great wealth. By what? Be, by being in bed with her, by laying with her, you see? By taking on her ways. You see? 
But the point is, it says, what? Have our sins have reached up into heaven. <clears throat> okay? So, no, Babylon will not be healed. Yes, Babylon is broken down. Babylon is distraught. Babylon is through. Okay? And it may seem, right, the elites may put it out to see, it, they, may, they may put it out in the media to seem as like, look, we're going to recover. Right? We're going to get back to normal. Right? Things will be fine. Just don't worry. Calm down. See, that's what they put out there. Right? But we know, as the men of the Lord, the servants of prophets, we know that America is finished. America is never going to go back to being normal again. Never. Okay? Just because we're in this little phase of, you know, just wear your mask and some places is open here and some places is open there. You can travel here and you can travel there. You can do these, uh, a lot of particular things that you used to do, but just now wear a mask, right? We just know that's a cover up to for what's really about to come down a pipeline. Because in a minute, we're about to deal with what? Mandatory vaccines. You see? We're about to deal with mandatory vaccines. It's going to go from this no, uh, uh, no mask, then you can't come into the store. No mask, you can't do this and do that. To uh, if you don't have this uh, vaccine ID or vaccine passport to say you took took this test, you will no longer be allowed to enter into the store. You will no longer be allowed to do this. You will no longer be allowed to do that. The same with uh, uh, what's going on in, in Europe right now. Okay, Europe is going through their second wave, going through a lockdown. Certain places is going. A lockdown for six weeks, another six weeks, another place is getting locked down for two weeks. You see? But eventually it's gonna come down to a, a, a second wave lockdown where people are gonna be locked down for months. Okay, and then they're gonna come with this this approach to say, you know what? The only and it, you know, this is what I'm speculating. The only only way that we can allow people, you know, to, to come back out to travel, to come out of their homes is by getting the chip. I mean not the chip salakia. Right, move it too fast, <laughs> you know, by getting a vaccine, you know, which everything is leading to the chip, okay? The mark of the beast. All right. I'm gonna actually wanna read before I start this step, I wanna read Matthew 13, verse 8. It says, or Mark, Mark 13, verse 8 says, For nation shall rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows, you see? And all of this is taking place all around the earth. Okay? At a rapid rate, at a rapid rate. And see, these are the beginning of sorrows, right? With everything that we see going on throughout the earth today is what? The beginning of sorrows. Okay? Things will not be the same. You see? Hey, see the Lord, how about Shmi was shy is about to take all you people out, out your comfortability zone. Right. Even us, even the men of the Lord, we are about to be taken out of our comfortability zone. OK, things are about to be changed. Right. Things are going to are, are going to be changed. Uh, very fast, man. OK. So uh, I want to play this qu quick clip. I'm going to do a little commentary on it and I'll uh, pull a few more scriptures out, you know, as the spirit will allow me. So tune in. The most powerful country of the developed world is registering staggering poverty rates. A recent study has shown that over 8 million Americans have fallen into poverty this year. Meanwhile, the mainstream media insists that we're in the middle of a significant economic rebound, even though numbers have repeatedly proven the opposite. Hey, you see? And that's using that media deception. They always use that media deception to make it look like, you know, things are going to get better, you know. But according to the real stats, what they a lot of times do not show is that this place will never rebound. You see? And then it shows just by the effect of how these how millions of, upon millions of people continue to what? Continue to uh uh uh, sign up for unemployment. So what does that mean if they're signing up for unemployment? Meaning they have lost their job. You see? That's what that means. Okay, and it's going to continue. The, hey, this place is going to go further and further downhill. In fact, on Thursday, 
the latest data was released, and it reported that another 898,000 new unemployment claims were filed, showing the highest weekly spike since August. Yet, the experts' assessment that the mainstream media relies upon has continuously outlined that this downward trend wasn't supposed to be happening. According to their perspective, unemployment rates should be dwindling as the U.S. economy is allegedly switching into recovery mode. Tragically for all of us, they couldn't be more wrong. But today, we are here to debunk these mild, misleading reviews of such serious issues and present a realistic interpretation of the recent studies, which have been warning that further millions could be pushed into the poverty line by the... And a lot of people that's going into that poverty line is who? The middle class. Okay? That's a lot of the people that's going into the poverty line, right? Because a lot of us already have been in poverty. A lot of us already, you know, is really almost, you know, living, you know, two, three checks away from not being able to pay certain bills. You see? I want to get this scripture real quick. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1. It says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not. You see? So we got to remember the Lord when it's not in a bad time. You see? And when you're dealing with our people... You so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, which are the true Hebrew Israelites, right? You would tend to want to try to seek the Lord when you're only going through a bad time, right? Not on an everyday basis. Okay, that's just how our people are. And then you are seeking the Lord in, 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 a, in, a, in a way where it's not the right way. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm saying that but to say this. A lot of our people have a zeal the most high, but it's not according to knowledge. You see? See, we give them all the truth and the understanding straight out of the Holy Scriptures with the the, uh, the right understanding. But see, they don't accept that. They accept the way, they accept the colonial plantation Christianity way. That's the way they accept the Lord, you see? And they just say, you know what? I just believe in, you know, this and that. Okay, I read a certain Bible verse every day and... You know, I'm good. I'm saved. I just got to believe John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. You see all that type of madness. Okay? Which little do they know that they're on the verge of being destroyed unless they repent or unless they are of the elect. I better say, I, it's better I say it that way. All right? So it says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not. Or the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. By the sun or the light, or the moon, or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the days when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease, because they are a few, and those that look out of the windows be darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the streets. When the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. And this is what's happening. You see, the grinding is ceasing. You know, jobs or loot are getting, you know, cut, you know, at a rapid rate. You know, and, and they, what, the daughter of music is being brought low. You see, it's being brought low. A lot of places don't have this, you know, rejoicing spirit right now. Okay, because... You know, a lot of jobs don't have this reducing spirit right now because they threw, you know. They can barely get back. They took and they're taken out of their, their security. You see, they can't do as they please. They can't, you know, travel too much as they please. You know, maybe because they don't have the extras and they, uh, they, they were used to having. You know, or they got to go through these different measures now due to this pandemic madness. You see, so a lot of people don't, don't have this rejoicing spirit. You know, but then on the flip side, on the flip side, a lot of people are still in a rejoicing spirit because what they 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 just they just they don't know what the hell's going on. You see, a lot of people just still spending all this buku money on the, this and that and their, see they don't know what time we in, right? They don't know what time we in. You see, see it it, be, it would be wise if people spent their money on. Things that are about to be very high value, right? Very high value, right? Now, I'm not saying these things will save you, but I'm saying that it would be wise to 
have a, have an abundance of these things if you can afford it. Not do a lot of BS or buy a lot of BS, right? Like what? Like okay, so what's about to be a lot? Of, what's about to be high value very soon? Toilet paper, water, canned goods, rice, right? These different things are about to be high value meat, right? And that's what you wanted to store some meat, okay? Which that could be extra, but these type of things are about to be high value, right? But see, our people don't they, see. Our our people are just they're just blind. They don't know what the hell is going on, and they have that mind state too of these things is going to recover, and this is just something that's going to pass, and we're going we're going to overcome this. These people don't know what the hell is going on, okay? People have, don't have, and see, this is why a lot of our people are being led as sleep uh, as, as as a sheep or as flocks like you, as a flock to the slaughter. You see, and we're telling them, we warning them, we're doing different things and letting them know but they ain't paying attention. They ain't they they have no clue. You see, and these and these things are right there in their face. You you, you see, with all this going on. Jake's still in his spirit of folly. Jake's still in his spirit of mirth. Okay? Jake still think about partying and all this dumb shit. Right? And so that, that's why when it when this shit hit the fan, it's going to hit them harder than the people that it is preparing and that know better to what's going on. Okay? And and it's better to be prepared spiritually. Because we got we gotta say we gotta say this to Jake so they don't so they don't you know, uh, take these things and run with it. It's better to prepare spiritually than to prepare carnally. You see? Because it don't really matter what the things that you have. If you're carnal, that shit's going to somebody else. <laughs> you see? But it's better to store up your riches, your, your treasures. Okay, in the kingdom of heaven, there's store these things on the earth, which can be taken and that can be moth eaten, roughly paraphrasing. Let's continue. End of the year. To stay truly informed and updated with the developments of the economic collapse, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with friends to help our community grow. In an attempt to tame the public's reaction to the real facts, all fronts of corporate media have been trying to persuade us that things are about to get much better for the U.S. economy. But all evidences point to a very different future. The truth is, at this point, it seems that they are trying to convince us through exhaustion. The American people are drained from having to deal with so much bad news for so long. As the holiday season approaches, it is understandable why so many people would rather believe that there is a prospect of rapid improvement right in front of us. And we don't judge that. We also wish this could be true. But when they flood us with biased information about an imminent economic recovery, their goal isn't actually to refresh our hopes that everything will be okay. The main objective behind it is to divert our attention from the fact that they are indeed responsible for the crash that is happening right now. While millions are suffering from the current situation, Wall Street speculative earnings continue to rise, but that can't be interpreted as a signal of improvement to our economy. It only demonstrates that a handful of investors are thriving during the most difficult times in American history. More money in their pockets, while over half of all U.S. small businesses that used to form the foundation of our economy are either being swallowed up by large corporations or left to die. Undoubtedly, some sectors witnessed a significant increase in their earnings. It's no wonder why Jeff Bezos has become the richest man on Earth, while the rest of the population of the planet is facing deep financial anxiety. That is to say, corporate earnings do not always translate into more jobs or higher consumer spending. At the end of the day, the recovery they talk about doesn't mean life will improve for us but profits will definitely keep soaring for them. 
The reality is that since the lockdown was enacted and business activities were shut down, pushing millions of workers out of their posts and leaving them reliant on the unemployment checks, the number of vulnerable households has exploded. The stimulus checks did help many to stay afloat. Sadly, several families stated that when they were working, their income used to be lower than after they were laid off and received unemployment benefits. And then, when the stimulus wore off and the benefits were interrupted, many of these households found themselves in desperate situations. They are now facing the threat of losing their homes and going through a difficult winter of acute food insecurity. This is what the new study by Columbia University evaluated. According to the study, approximately 8 million Americans have slid into poverty since May. The researchers informed that the monthly poverty rate for... Check that out. 8 million Americans, right, have failed or have went into poverty since May. Since May. And that number is going to double, maybe even triple, right? Hey, like, when this when this second wave hit, it is going to be devastating, devastating to Babylon the Great, man, and especially to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You see, see, and and this is. When you, when you try to tell your people these things like this, they shun, they they shrug their shoulders, they fan it off. But see, because they don't take reality seriously. Okay, because like we saw at the time, we are your local newscasters, right? We're giving you the forecast of what's to come, right? As as prophets, all right? We're telling you of what's about to come beforehand, as it is written, right? But see, our people don't want to deal with reality. You see, that's what our, our see. Let's get this right, because this is why our, a lot of our people cover their ears, you know, and they want to believe bullshit. Um, Isaiah thirty verse eight it says, "Now go, now go, write it in it." Write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will will not hear the law of the Lord. Right. This is our people, a rebellious people which say to the seers, see not and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, but speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit. So really, our people want lied to. Our people like hearing smooth things. Our people like hearing false information, right? So that's why when we give them to them, give it to them raw, right? We give them straight shots, no chaser. They can't take it. They don't want to deal with it. They don't want to deal with the fact of what's really coming to this place, right? It's it's better to deal with reality and to, than to not deal with it. So you can have, at least prepare, have a prepared mindset to say, okay. How can I help myself in the preparing of what's to come? What could I do? Right? Our people don't say that when they hear us speaking the highways and byways. Oh, what could I do that I may be able to escape this uh, destruction? What could I do that that I may get salvation? Well, it's not up to you, you know. But I'm just saying they they don't they don't take that they don't take that step to even say well what could I do? They just say oh, okay we'll deal with it when it when, when we get there right. And that's one thing. See, you, your mouthpiece talk a lot. You you think you're ready for when it to get there, but you ain't going to be ready. You see? And our, our people don't want to deal with reality. They'd rather hear smooth things. They'd rather hear lies. So that's why they more attached. They're attached on to that. Right? It says, get ye out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease before us, from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out and out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly 
at an instant and he shall break what? And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a sh uh, in it a shed to take fire from the earth or to take water with all out of the pit. Okay, you know, so hey man, look, our, our people want to continue to hear foolishness, our people want to continue to be rebellious, our people want to continue to not hear the law of the Lord and do whatever the hell they want and stay upon pervert, uh, continue in their perverse perverseness. Okay, we see how far that gets you. You see, because hey, the, 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 hey, the biggest one of the biggest things, right? The biggest things is going to be, I told you so. You know how beautiful that's going to be? Them three words, I told you so, or four words. As a matter of fact, well, three words with one letter. I told you so. That's going to be the best feeling in the world for us. I told you so. Because while these people are going to be mourning, right, and, and doing all this running around, we're going to be calm. We're going to be cool. Because why? We already knew what was coming. We're going to be cool. You know, you might be a little nervous, you know, here and there, things like that. But compared to what these people are going to be out here, they're going to be losing it. Com they're going to completely lose it. You see? And then they're going to be looking for you for answers. Certain family members and certain friends. Oh, I remember you was trying to tell me about. I remember you was talking about. I remember you said such such about the economy going to collapse. I remember you was talking about famines. What should I do? Where should I go? This and that. No. Nah. No, nah. you didn't want to hear me before. I ain't got nothing to say. I ain't got nothing to say. Especially when the family of the work, the family of the world gonna come to. Oh man, you you people are you you out of there. Hey, so why look? The doors of repentance is open right now, right? It will behoove you to repent. It will behoove you to re return and come back to your house. Watch me, or shy man. Okay, and do what is commanded to you, right? Keep these law statutes and commandments to the best of your ability. Continue to have faith. Continue to uh, pray fast. Do what you need to do to try to get in the good graces of your heart by Shemiel Shai before all hell break loose, before the doors of repentance close, man. You see? Hey, but these people got the same spirit as in the days of Noah. Oh, oh, oh. Noah building. No, Noah building an ark. You, you just imagine our people what they were saying when Noah was building an ark. Oh, this, this nigga. I'm just saying how they would say, oh, this nigga building an ark. Who he think he is? He think he know better. It ain't going to rain. I ain't never going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. Because you know how Jake be. Jake, Jake talk a lot of shit. Jake talk a lot of shit. You see? So that's why the biggest, <laughs> that's what I, I told you so is going to be one of the biggest things. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You see? You ain't want to listen. Now you want to listen now. I ain't got nothing to say. You see? Hey, I pray the Lord put that on my spirit heavy. Because I don't want to be talking to people. Uh, no, you, you you thought I was crazy. You thought I was just bug out. I didn't know what I was talking about. I was a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist. Right? I was this and that. Right? Keep that same energy. That's how I feel. Keep that same energy. Keep that same energy you had. That scoffing. That mocking. Right? That, that, that shaming and all the shit you was doing. Keep that same energy when all hell break loose. Salah, you for the rain. Let's continue. September was higher than the rates during April or May. And it also topped pre-crisis levels due to the expiration of the CARES Act stimulus checks and $600 per week supplement to unemployment benefits. The study was released almost at the same time the Labor Department announced a spike of nearly 900,000 new claims last week an increase of approximately 77,000, or 9.5%, from the previous week. Adjusted for seasonal fluctuation, the total number was 898,000 claims, which means future poverty rates are expected to present even larger numbers. Amid a second round of layoffs, a surge in infection cases, and deadlocked talks over new stimulus, a separate study by researchers at Notre Dame and the University of Chicago discovered that six million people have slipped into poverty just in the last three months. These numbers are very concerning, expressed Bruce D. Meyer, an economist at the University of Chicago, who is also one of the authors of the study. They tell us people are having a lot more trouble paying their bills, 
paying their rent, putting food on the table. The Columbia researchers found that at the peak of the crisis in May, the unemployment checks have helped more than 18 million people to maintain a certain level of financial security. But by September, that number had fallen to less than 4 million. The CARES Act was unusually successful, but now it's gone, and a lot more people are poor," said Zachary Perelin, another author of the Columbia Analysis. The current economic meltdown is affecting minorities particularly hard, deepening the already calamitous poverty gaps that predate the health crisis. According to the government's measure, a family of four in a typical city is considered poor if its annual income falls below $28,170. However, several households haven't even hit the minimum annual income rate in the past year, and several others are now sliding towards the same unfortunate path. Y'all catch that though? Y'all see how they showing Jake though, right? You see how they showing Jake? They showing the so-called Negroes. They showing and they showing the Latin speaking tribes as well. You see, you see how they showing Jake. See, they all know we Israelites. Now they put us in, they categorize us and say we're the minority, but really we're the majority. Among Black and Latino communities, poverty rates are rising at an especially boom. The Black and Latino communities. You see, and guess what? Through it all. Uh, a lot of these things they're trying to push on who first? You Israelites. You Israelites. Because they're saying that you're the problem that this, this is going on. You see? You can get the... You 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 were... Uh, uh, you're the problem uh, for this cover 19 so to speak, that you can get it faster so you'll be able to spread it faster type of thing. They're, they're going to... Bl they're blaming us. Remember that. They're blaming us for what's going on fast pace. The new data shows black people and Latinos are more than twice as likely as white people to be poor. Both minority groups disproportionately work in industries hardly damaged by the recession and have faced obstacles to receive federal aid. Black communities predominantly live in southern states with low benefits, while some Latin groups were disqualified because they lack legal status. More concerningly, both studies have reported child poverty rates are fast expanding, with an additional 2.5 million children falling below the poverty line since May. Specialists on the field warn that even short stays in poverty can cause long-lasting harm to developing brains, and therefore, the future generation may include critical numbers of children with cognitive problems due to malnourishment. Members of both research groups stressed that the rising poverty underscores an urgent need for a new round of help. It's really important that we reinstate some of the lost benefits, emphasized Mr. Meyer. On the other hand, authorities seem unbothered about this soul-crushing situation. Jason Turner, the executive director of Secretary's Innovation Group, which advises conservative state officials on aid policies, doesn't consider these rates tragic at all. I'm not as alarmed about poverty as I am about unemployment. Poverty is an arbitrary income threshold, and people who dip below it, they make adjustments. If you're not working at all, that's a huge deal, he recently stated while arguing governmental aid was allowing people to stay out of their jobs. And the 8% increase in poverty since January was... The Democrat Party hates fracking, they hate coal, they hate domestic energy production. A modest amount. Statements like these are very disconcerting because they reveal that the ones that are in a position to make decisions that affect millions of lives seem to blame the wrong side of the story for a catastrophe that is made by design. Do you think hardworking families with children to provide for would choose to be out of their jobs to live in constant uncertainty of whether or not they will receive further government aid? Stories of thousands of workers who continue to send job applications without any success are emerging on the news. 
Of course, authorities do not truly believe that people would prefer to be skipping meals, getting evicted from their homes, and losing... I mean, and, and you see the point, you see where it's going, you know, going into, uh, you know, uh, basically people, at, hey, job losses to continue to, to flourish, you know, but there's five minutes, 40 seconds left, you can go watch that on your own, um, hey, you know, at the end of the day, Lord willing, I hope this video was uh, edifying, you know, that's what we do it for, but hey, you know, uh, you can find it on Epic Economist, all right, I subscribe to that, and it gives a lot of, you know, good information in it information out about what's going on in the economy you know but hey at the point the point is hey we're in the beginning of sorrows okay and, th and this right this pandemic and this you know all this th this is just this is well, what you're seeing uh, that's a part of the down road spiral spiral which is happening to America Babylon and great and it will get worse so hey you Israelites out there, it's time for you to repent for the for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And whether you're a so-called right, um, this is not based on skin color, right? Your spirit bear witness with our spirit. You are the children of the most high, right? You see line go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are an Israelite, no matter what color you look like, no matter what language you speak, no matter what land you were born in. It's all about the sea line. So with that, I want to give all praise and honor and glory to you. How about you, Mount Shai? The one to see the apostles, the elders, the great meals, the peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Shalom.